What is happening, everybody? Steve here with Raken Profit. Welcome to another show. And today we have a super cool show. We've got Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout on the call today. What's going on, Greg, man? How are you? Steve, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much for having me on. I'm stoked to be here. I know we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. Um, there's quite a few people behind the scenes that are really excited for the show. Awesome. And um, yeah, it should be very value driven. And we're going to talk about some things that you guys probably aren't used to hearing, some things that are outside the box and some you know, other business models that you guys may not be accustomed to, such as wholesale and private label. Uh, but before we get started, I want to say, man, I'm a little jealous because I could see the reflection from behind you and it looks like a city. <laughs> Is that Vancouver? <laughs> I'm in Vancouver right now and it's uh, I think one of the first like warm kind of like sunny-ish days uh, they've had this spring. So it's really nice. I was actually playing beach volleyball right before this uh, interview. So uh, beautiful day today. Oh man. So I got to really do a good job to, to follow up with beach beach volleyball. So okay, cool. <laughs> we're going to have some fun here guys. So um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you, your story and uh, kind of your history uh, selling and then, you know, with Jungle Scout and everything. Yeah, for sure. So actually, so if we rewind about um, so after I went to school, after I went to college, um, I got a degree as a civil engineer and I worked as a civil engineer. So I did that uh, for a few years. Wasn't very happy or like, it wasn't very fulfilling. I had this like strong entrepreneurial spirit. Right? I wanted to do my own thing. So my way out of that was actually selling stuff on Amazon. So I started like with some wholesale stuff, then got into the private label model a little bit. I was able to quit my job as an engineer and I was a full-time Amazon seller for a couple of years. Um, and then after that, I had like this strong pain point in my business and that was finding more SKUs to sell. So like I knew the easiest way to like scale up this business and grow was just to add more products to my line. But it was tough for me at the time. It was like really time consuming and tedious to find like the bad opportunities. Um, and that's how uh, Jungle Scout was born. So Jungle Scout is a software tool. It is a product research tool for Amazon sellers to help them locate good opportunities to sell on Amazon. So where I'm at today, I'm still an Amazon seller. I only spend a few hours a week on it. I have a small team that helps me there. And then uh, I focus about 95% of my time or efforts on Jungle Scout and the software side of things. Um, and that's really grown a lot and I get a lot of enjoyment out of that. That's cool, man. I was watching one of your uh, interviews with my buddy, Stefan Palernos. And at the time, uh, I forget how long ago that was, but at the time you were doing, I believe, what was it, like 400000 a month from, from your private label business at that time? Yeah. So I think that was actually a couple of years ago when I did that interview with Stefan. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was able, I've been able to grow it a little bit since then. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going, the, the Amazon stuff's going well. It's just like an awesome opportunity right now. I don't, I don't mention that to impress anybody, but to really impress upon the audience that this guy has been around the block. He's done it. He knows exactly what it takes to succeed on Amazon. And um, he actually took all that knowledge and, and built out his, his software, which helps people. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that later. Uh, but more specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, today how to find profitable products to sell on Amazon with zero ideas. And I thought it was perfect to bring you on today, Greg, because... As I was mentioning before the call, a lot of people who are watching this right now are, you know, maybe they're typically sourcing from thrift stores or garage sales or they're doing retail arbitrage. You know, some are even getting into liquidation and different things like that. And one of the challenges that people have been having is, you know, getting enough products, dealing with restrictions and really finding profitable products. So I think what you're going to talk about today is going to definitely bring some light to other opportunities. So uh, with that being said, you want to dive in, Greg put together a little uh, presentation. So yeah, Absolutely. why don't you take it away, man, and uh, share your screen and I'll let you do your thing. Happy to do so. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I can definitely like relate to those people, you know, it's like, I think probably a lot of the people listening to this have like heard about private label. You may not be doing it. And like, Everyone, like, I think most people understand how good of an opportunity it is, though, right? Most people are just like, I don't know where to start. That's like where everyone like, gets hung up. It's like, what should I sell, right? <laughs> so um, I'm definitely going to help you guys out with that today. Um, so like Steve said, um, we're going to go over product research, how to find good opportunities without any ideas. So, you know, you can start this um, with a blank slate and I actually encourage you to do so. So by the end of this webinar, you guys will know how to find the exact products that will make you money on, make you money on Amazon with zero ideas or experience. So um, 
I think a lot of people are under the impression like, oh, like I, you know, this light bulb is going to click one day. And I'm just going to know like this like fantastic product. And I think that's a terrible idea personally. As an engineer by background, I'm very like data driven. So instead of going off like your gut instinct, what you think is going to sell well on Amazon, like we have the numbers now. We can just physically look like what the best opportunities are. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I also put together some show notes or webinar notes, and you can download them here at junglescout.com slash rake and profits. Uh, it's more or less what we've, we're going to talk about through the next hour or so um, in written format. There may be a little bit more in there, so I encourage you guys to download that. And I've also included 25 product ideas um, to kind of help jumpstart you guys. So you can get that at junglescout.com slash rake and profits. All right, so let's talk about real quick, you know, like what is fulfillment by Amazon? What is like this private label model that you're talking about? Um, so this, I love fulfillment by Amazon. So a lot of you guys, you maybe are in the past, maybe you've sold like on eBay or your own e-commerce store, <clears throat> excuse me. And th those are great opportunities, don't get me wrong, or at, you know, at one point there are fantastic opportunities, but the my biggest beef with those is you have to fulfill your own products. And that's like the dirty work that I don't like to do and most people don't like to do. Um, so what's so great about fulfillment by Amazon is they do all this like hard work for you. They're the ones after an, after an order is placed that picks packs and ships it. Um, and what's so great, they're not only the fulfillment center, but the, the marketplace where people are purchasing these goods as well. So. Um, what I'm going to be talking about most of this webinar is like the private label model. And what I mean by that is we're going to find a good opportunity. We would then find a factory to make this for us. Most of them are in China. We're going to put our own brand. So this is like our brand, our company, our label on it and sell it on Amazon. So this is a, a great business model because like we're going straight to the source as far as sourcing these products. So we're getting really good uh, prices. Um, we're selling it on Amazon, which is by far the market, the largest marketplace in the whole world. I forget the statistics, but a crazy like 80% of, of uh, searches now start on Amazon for people trying to buy products. It's something ridiculous like that. And you know, these people's credit cards are already stored in there. They already have a Prime account. So I mean, this is like where you want to be uh, to be selling stuff now. Um, and they, like I said, they take care of a lot of this dirty work for you, right? They manage the returns for you. Um, you don't have to build out your own website. You don't have to be like, you know, you don't have to know the technical side of it. So it's a really cool opportunity right now. Um, if you can't tell by how much I love it. So I talked a little bit at the beginning, so I'm just going to briefly go over this slide. But like I said, I used to be a, pre, uh, a civil engineer. I was able to quit my job by selling on Amazon. I don't know exactly how much, but I've sold tens of millions of dollars worth of revenue on Amazon. I founded Jungle Scout, which we'll see a little bit later in the presentation. Um, just about two and a half years ago, and I'm still an Amazon seller. I'm still in the weeds. I'm still launching new products on a weekly basis. So I, I know what's working right now. Um, so this is a case study that I did. Um, you can actually find this product on Amazon right now. Most I love this product. Yeah, most most Amazon sellers don't share what products they sell, but um, I launched this about 16 months ago. You can go to Amazon right now and just search for Jungle Sticks. This is my product. They're bamboo marshmallow sticks. Um, this screenshot was taken last week, but it was like $230,000 in the past 16 months, um, in the past 30 days. This is kind of the slow season, actually. It's going to ramp back up like next month. But I, it sold like 600 units, like 12,000 bucks um, in the past 30 days. So this is the type of product that I'm selling when I'm saying I'm doing like the private label model. So I didn't invent bamboo marshmallow skewers. I don't even know the last time I've, I used one, maybe when I was like 10. Um, a factory already makes bamboo marshmallow skewers. So like, it's not my invention. All I did was say, hey, can you put them in a pack of 110, put my private label on it. I'm real creative. So I came up with jungle sticks. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I'm selling this on Amazon. So my factory ships like a thousand of these at a time into um, Amazon. So I don't actually touch them. They ship them from China to the Amazon distribution centers. And then whenever someone purchases these, like, you know, uh, in the past 30 days, 612 of them, it's like 20 a day. Amazon fulfills 20 of these every day and ships them out to all the customers. So I don't have to do any of like that dirty work. Um, all of the work is, don't get me wrong, there's work involved, but the work's up front. The work is spotting the opportunities, finding the factory, coming up with your packaging, like that kind of stuff. So all the work's like front loaded 
and then you have a system that generates you money. So it, it's a super cool um, uh, business model. So revenue is great and everything. It's cool to show everyone, uh, you know, these vanity metrics, but it's like, okay, so did you make any money? Last year, this one product profited us uh, $51,000. And here's the proof. This, um, we, this is a charitable mission. So we donated 100% of the profits to Doctors Without Borders. So in one year, one product made us $51,257, which we were able to donate to Doctors Without Borders, which um, is really cool, right? So this is, you know, this is uh, Team Jungle Scout and two separate donations um, holding these checks here. So this is like, to me, this is like an awesome feeling to be able to, you know, like make this one product and be able to donate $50,000 to a charity. I never thought like back when I was working in a corporate job, I didn't even make that much money in an entire year <laughs> and just like one product's making this now. So that's, so I get an idea of how good of an opportunity I think it is. And I was like, it's really fun for me to interact with the audience and kind of know like, what would you guys do with an extra $50,000 per year? I think some people would be paying off student loans or um, maybe a down payment on a house or something else. So if you guys want to put that in the chat box, uh, it's always really fun for me to read that stuff. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Uh, I'll let you know what people are saying. Yeah, you'll have to read me off a few, Steve. And while we wait for that, I'm actually doing another case study right now. Um, and I'm launching hooded baby towel. So they, they look, they're going to look like this. They're in production right now. They'll probably be into Amazon in about two or three weeks. So if you're watching a replay down the road, you can search for it. They're going to be called Jungle Snugs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And the, the purpose why I tell you this, and you can find out about this, it's called the million dollar case study. Again, we're, um, we're gonna be growing this business to a million dollars in revenue. And again, all the money from this one's being donated to uh, Pencils of Promise. So uh, another really cool charitable mission. But the reason I tell you this is I've, you know, I haven't launched this product yet, but I'm already confident that's gonna be successful. I'm willing to like put my name on the line and you know, have all these eyes looking at it because I've like figured out a blueprint that you can kind of follow that, severely like minimizes your risk. So it's like, it's nothing's guaranteed, but like I'm very confident like by following this blueprint, I can launch successful products on Amazon. Um, and there's still lots of opportunities left. I, I, I'm a fan of just selling whatever like the data tells me to sell. So there's no relation between uh, <laughs> bamboo sticks and uh, towels for little babies. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of, those were the good opportunities and that's, uh, I'm willing to sell just kind of whatever the good opportunities are the, the, the data is. So you're probably thinking now like, okay, cool, Greg, nice stories and all. Like, let's get to the meat. How do I find these myself? I would like to make $50,000 in profit per product each year. Um, so what are we gonna be looking for? We're gonna be looking for products or niches that have existing demand. So I, I used to do a fair amount of kind of like coaching. I don't do it anymore because of the, uh, the time constraints, but people would come to me all the time and say like, hey, I want to sell this and this product. I wanna sell this product, whatever, um, without knowing any of like the numbers behind it. And that is extremely risky. Sure, there's like a 5% chance or whatever that that product will actually be successful. But instead of guessing, um, like we have the numbers now, so we, we can just look for like what's already selling on Amazon. That means that people are already searching on Amazon and trying to buy this. and uh, We'll do like an over the shoulder look in a few minutes and I'll show you like how you can uh, find this and learn it. Um, so yeah, existing demand is great. Um, but we also want to find products that have great demand and low competition, right? So there's tons of products that sell really well on Amazon, but we want the ones that sell well with low competition. So again, I'll be showing you that in a few minutes, but um, the the main thing to be thinking about is you, look, you want to look for something that doesn't have that many reviews. So if a product's selling well with a very few number of reviews, it means it's a relatively like immature or non-competitive niche, and that's a much easier one for you to enter and start getting sales right away. A good opportunity for 2017 and into the future is gonna be improving products. So, you know, like a few years ago, there weren't many like private label sellers on Amazon. It was much easier just launch like the exact same product as the next guy and do well. You can still do that now, but it's a little bit harder. But like what I think is like a great opportunity and will be forever is to improve upon a product. So my hooded baby towels that I'm launching right now, um, all my competitors are selling really well. Uh, you know, some competitors are selling 2000 a month, 800 a month, 1000 a month, et cetera. Um, but a lot of them are getting 
some negative reviews of people saying that the fabric was too thin. So on my baby towels, I'm doing a little bit thicker fabric and I'm confident that I can get like four and a half or five star reviews, whereas they're getting, you know, most of them have like four star reviews because those one and two star reviews are uh, bringing down their averages. So um, I know that, you know, if I can improve upon this product, get a little bit better reviews, then I can sell it for more money. And the cost difference to get like thicker fabric was only like 25 cents per product for me. And I'll probably be able to charge like a few dollars extra. And you know, I'll be able to like take over those top ranking spots because your average review is something that Amazon takes into the algorithms when they show the results to people. Um, and then one last thing is I like to look for like a little bit more expensive products. The products that are sell for like 10, 12, 15 bucks, it's hard to make much money off those because Amazon does have some fees that are like flat fixed fees. Um, and if you're selling like a $10 product, I think Amazon's fixed fees are going to be like five, six bucks. So even if the product only costs you a dollar, it's like, eh, what, maybe a dollar or two is left over for you. You have to sell a lot of units if you're only making a, a buck or two a piece to make any kind of like real money. If you can make $5 profit each one, it's like, you know, the money adds up a lot faster. So uh, again, we'll go over that a little bit more. Steve, tell me what, uh, what do some people say they do with an extra 50 K a year? I'm not sure if the feed is working properly right now, so I wasn't no able to get any um, answers right now. But uh, okay. there's there's some conversations going on right now. People want to get started with private label. Um, they're they're interested in hearing more about how to find the product. So I think everyone's just kind of excited to cool. hear what's going on. All right, sweet, sounds good. All right, so. And uh, I'm going to do an over the shoulder look in a second, but you know, like big picture here, we're focusing on uh, a product with good margins. We want to add value or improve upon the product. We want something of good quality so we can get those good reviews. Um, and if we can differentiate our product in, in some way, those are all key things to be looking for. So, all right, enough of the slides. Let's get straight to the, the good stuff. So, um, a lot of you guys. I'm, I'm going to assume a lot of people watching this may not be too familiar with Amazon. So I'm just going to give you just like a quick rundown about a few things. So um, I'm searching marshmallow sticks. This is my product right here, Jungle Sticks. This is like a paid um, ad. So that's like a sponsored product. But I'm also like, I guess, number one, two, the second spot here. Um, so on all listings, I can look at any. Let me use one of my competitors, just an example. Um, so I'll choose one of my competitors here. On like 99% of listings on Amazon, almost every listing, if we scroll down and look at um, this product information section, there's something called the best sellers rig, okay? This is a really key piece of data for us to understand how well products sell. So in all of the patio, lawn, and garden category, there's probably like 10 million products in there, I don't know, a ton. This is the 538th best seller, which is pretty good. So using this piece of information, we can determine how well this product sells like on a monthly basis. So Jungle Scout has a totally free tool. You don't have to pay for anything. You don't even have to put in your email. Um, you can go here. You can click on Patio Lawn and Garden. What did I say? That was like 538. I can type in 538. And that product sells about 950 units per month. Okay. So that that's really go and to understand um, because like I said, we're looking for products that are niches that have existing demand. Um, actually, just <laughs> just this morning, uh, I was sitting next to a few of our developers um, and you know, we a lot of us have like these laptop stands and one of the guys was saying like, oh man, these aren't like available uh, in Canada. It's probably like such a good opportunity. I've been looking for this. Like I'll probably start selling this or whatever. And then, but when he actually went and looked at it, it's like there's no existing demand in the Amazon Canadian market for these like specific type of mm -hmm. um, laptop stands. So again, this is like, I just can't emphasize that enough. Like before he looked at that, he was like, oh man, like, you know, I'm going to quit being a developer and be a millionaire now. I'll just start selling these laptop stands. It's like, <laughs> Sorry, but there's only like seven of these sold every month. Like, sorry, you're not going to be quitting your job or even moving much inventory. <laughs> so instead, like I can't, uh, I know I've said this a bunch of times, but I can't emphasize this enough. Just go off with the data is telling you, even if you don't want to buy Jungle Scout tools, like we have this free tool right here, the estimator, and just put it in here and please only sell things that have existing demand. So that's something that's really important. Um, so 
if you want to get started right now and uh, you know i don't i don't want this to turn into like a sales pitch for jungle scout tools even though we're going to use them in a few minutes but i want to give you guys the knowledge of how to do this even without our tools so if you want to just like get started looking for private label opportunities what you can do is you can um just do some brainstorming like on your everyday life of just different like random things to sell and when you're looking for just like random stuff to sell um it's easier if it's like smaller and lighter weight so just imagine like if the product can fit in like a shoe box that's ideal um because then it's something called standard instead of oversized and it's also good if it's real if like a lighter weight product are less headaches because it's easier to ship so i won't go into like too much detail about all of the the reasons why that is but just like a general rule of thumb is a simpler and when i say simple i'm talking about like a water bottle is pretty simple. There's not a lot to break there. Whereas an LED light is more complex. There's more things to break in transit and due to poor quality control at the factories and that type of thing um, for more complicated products. So what you could do is, you know, just in your everyday life, you can make a list of different products you run across. A good kind of area to look would be, be like at the end caps of like big box stores. So what I mean by that, like if you're walking down the big aisles at like Target or Walmart or Best Buy or whatever, you can like the products on the end caps. Those are usually like kind of like hot sellers. So that's somewhere you could get ideas to make a list. Um, you can look on like Pinterest is pretty good. Um, I don't know, just some like things you can just make a list. You can make the searches, then you could use our free tool um, and get an idea of like how well these products are selling. I so, uh, can I stop you real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. I was at the gym today, and um, uh -huh. I was. Uh, I forgot to bring a hanger with me, and when I went to go hang up my shirt, it kind of got all like wrinkled up. And I thought to myself, I wonder if they have clothing hangers that fold up together. So I looked on Amazon because I'm like, maybe this will be a good private label product. Um, and I saw there was a bunch of people selling them for like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. But um, like I just thought it was a unique idea, but I didn't go deep into the research. So maybe you could take a look at it. Yeah, let's do it. So I just searched this foldable hanger, um, <laughs> and all right. So like I said, um. This is, uh, so we could click into each one of these and kind of like look at the best sellers rank and use that tool. Um, for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the paid Jungle Scout tools just to make our life um, a little bit quicker since it's only you know an hour long webinar. But this is, let me zoom in a little because I know it can be sometimes hard to see. Um, this is, it's called the Jungle Scout extension. Like I said, this is a paid tool, so it's not free like the estimator, but with one click of the button, um, it shows us this little pop-up and we have a bunch of like the key pieces of data that we need to know whether to like uh, make educated decisions on this product. Um, so, you know, Steve had this idea, the foldable uh, hanger. And over in this column, this is estimated monthly sales. So this top guy, he sells about 300 units per month. Next guy's 50, next guy's like 200, 20, 22. Um, so there's a decent amount of demand in this particular niche. My personal rule of thumb that I look at before I'm willing to um, order a product or get into a niche is 3,000 units total of demand. So if I add up all of these or like the top 10 or, or this whole page, if I were to add all these together, I'd like to see 3,000 units total. Uh, just some quick math in my head here. It looks like this would only be like six or 800 units. So this yeah, is the demand doesn't appear to be there. Yeah. So this isn't enough demand for me to get excited and for me to will, be willing to find a factory and stuff. Um, so a little light on demand, but this is, this is a good example. Nonetheless, um, the price point is lower than I like, like I was saying, there are some like flat fees. So this top seller, um, the price is seven eighty nine. However, after you take out all of Amazon fees, there's only $3 and 72 cents left over. So if I buy this product for two bucks, which you may be able to buy these for two bucks, um, that means I would have a dollar and 72 cents left over in profit. And like I was talking about earlier, that that's a pretty thin margin. You know, it's like, I might, I may have to pay like a few hundred bucks in photography to get this listing started. Yeah. I might need a, whatever other fees it's like i gotta sell a lot of these things to start making back my money or make any kind of real money that's why i prefer to sell a little bit more expensive stuff um and then but again this is just a great example so let's look at um the other thing i look for remember is like the amount of competition so this particular product like i said the easiest way to gauge competition is the number of reviews and this this niche actually is not very competitive so i like to see like um two or three sellers in the top 10 spots. So these are the top 10 spots. 
with under f- like 40 or 50 reviews. So mm. I see one guy, two guy, three, four, five. Now, now why is that, um, uh, Greg? Why do you want to see less reviews? Great question. So the number of reviews is an easy way to gauge how mature uh, the niche is. Um, so a bunch of listings with a few number of reviews means that like they're relatively like immature. So this like this second guy here, this listing, this listing's probably only been on Amazon for like two months. So the really mature niches, like if I were to look, let me just show you like a yoga mat or something. I look at these, um, we'll see that there's a bunch with just like a whole bunch of reviews, right? Like this, this 4, guy's, yeah, like 4,000. <laughs> you can outrank him. Yeah. So I do know, you know, no one knows all the factors that Amazon search algorithms take into account, but I do know that one thing that they take into account is uh, like the historical um, sales velocity. So it's pretty hard to outrank this dude who this listing's probably been on Amazon for like four years. I don't know. It's been on here for a long time and he's selling a ton. He's selling 4,000 a month. So it it would be extremely hard to outrank this dude and get into this number one spot as a brand new seller. Whereas if I'm selling, you know, if we go back to these uh, foldable hangers, um, you know, a lot of those have probably only been on here for like a couple months or whatever. They don't, they're not that mature, probably don't have that much like sales history. So those are guys that'd be much easier to outrank. So that, that's a great way to judge the competition. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, like this is, you know, the Jungle Scout extension. It, um, you can actually find all this information. Like I said, I don't want to turn to a sales pitch. So you can actually find all this information by using like our free sales estimator to get this column. Amazon has a, um, an FBA fee calculator that you can use to get this column. So you can get all of this um, if you want, like if you're um, low on, like I say for like people who have some extra time, but like are low on cash, you can actually just do a spreadsheet and fill all this out yourself. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, that's like a great way, I think to like kind of like dip your toes in the water. Uh, mm-hmm. The extension just makes it a lot faster because you know, you just click a button and it shows all that to you. Um, yeah, I've I've actually I've had Jungle Scout for a couple of years and uh nice. It's one of those things it speeds it's 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 fast. It'll speed things up. Like you said, you can find all the information out there. It's kind of like learning private label. You can figure it all out on your own. You could take a course. I mean, it's just it's quick and like you showed before when you were scrolling through instead of having to click on each one, you just hit the the extension. So, that was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I think um yeah, I th- probably a lot of people if they end up deciding to get it it's you're less likely to get discouraged with the product research if it's like a little bit quicker and easier too, which is cool. Um, so yeah, so let me show you, show you guys now something else. Um, so like I say one way, you know, is you can come up with like a list of ideas just like in your everyday life. And that, that's a cool way to start. Um, and you know, you can use the free tools or whatever else we have an, another tool. I just want to kind of demonstrate to you guys here. And, this was so the first you know when I first got started the first product we created was the extension and then what I found was like it was getting kind of hard like a lot of you guys are probably a lot more creative than I am but it was getting pretty hard like in my everyday life to like think of potential product ideas and it's because a lot of it's like pretty obscure stuff like I don't I don't know if I knew that like bamboo marshmallow skewers I don't know if I knew that was like a real thing <laughs> you know like like three foot long imagine like these you know really long. <laughs> Like there's things like a, a pencil. I don't think I knew those really existed. And same thing, like I don't. Ha- my wife and I, we don't have any kids, so I'm pretty like out of tune of what like kids use and stuff. But I don't. I, I guess I've seen maybe like a hooded baby towel before, but I don't know if I really knew that those existed. Dude, I'm in the same boat, man. Like I'm in the same. <laughs> I'm like so not creative, man. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like as much. All I know about uh, parenting is like what I see like a few of my kids uh, post on Snapchat now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, all right. So what we've done here, so this is a separate tool. It's sold separately from the extension. This is called the jungle scout web app and I'll zoom in a little bit again. Right now I'm inside the product database. And like I said, this was like the next version of kind of like taking product research to the next level. What we've done is we've rebuilt Amazon's catalog in our own database and made it user friendly for sellers to search through. So if I go to Amazon, um, there's not like a search bar here for, hey, show me the products that are like are a good opportunity for me to sell. I can't say like, hey, only show me products that sell well but aren't very competitive and priced there. Um, 
they just don't have that option in the search bar, which I really wanted. So we built this ourselves. So what you can do is you can select which marketplace. It works for all of North America, uh, all the EU stores and India. And I can select some categories. So we'll just do the demo in the US because it's what I'm most familiar with. And uh, unfortunately, I only speak English. So what you can do is you can select a few categories that you're interested in. So let's just say like, um, the only categories that I don't like are like electronics because I try not to sell complicated stuff. And then I don't, I usually don't like clothing or jewelry uh, because most of the clothing stuff, there's like a strong brand allegiance to. So, you know, most people want like the, the Under Armour shirt, like with like the Under Armour logo, right? They don't want like your knockoff, like moisture wicking shirt. Um, so those usually like aren't as good of opportunities to private label. But besides that, it's pretty much like anything you're interested in. Um, so we'll just like do a few here. We'll say like Look at pet. all those categories. Man. There's like so many different categories. I didn't even realize it. Yeah, tons of categories. So I'll just pick a few here. Um, no, no real rhyme or reason for choosing these. Can, besides can I ask that, you a question, just, Greg? How many? Yeah, if you had to guess, how many products do you think are on Amazon? Because like every product essentially is almost like an opportunity to private label, right? In a sense, I don't. Is that a fair statement? Yes, that's a really good question. And actually, I know the answer to this because um, kind of in the weeds of it, there's about, um, there's in between 300 and 400 million products on Amazon. However, <laughs> keep in mind that a lot of- There's no of more those, ideas left, man. There's no more <laughs> ideas out there. I will say that um, a lot of those are books. I think like some of these books like have never sold once oh, in okay. the history of Amazon. And a lot of them are poor sellers. So the reason I know this is in our database, we have- right here, 37 million products, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and we decided not to put the products in our database that sell less than one per month. So like those products that sell like one a year, it's like, we don't care about those. We don't want them like clogging up our search like results. That. Yeah. So we only put, um, so there's 37 million products on Amazon that sell one a month or more. So <laughs> that's yeah. a lot, man. A lot Holy of products. Right? Yeah. So but out of those 37, we just want to find the best opportunities. So <laughs> I selected some categories here. I'm going to say like a minimum price of 18 bucks. Um, I'm going to say only show me the products that sell, like we'll do 300 a month or more. And that would be about 10 a day. In my opinion, that's like a pretty good seller if it's selling 10 a day. Um, we can filter by all this stuff. But I'm just going to also say like only show me products that are selling 300 a month or more and have less than 40 reviews. So again, that, that's telling me it's like a relatively immature product. Um, we'll, we'll just also say like, I kind of, like I said earlier, I like light products. So we'll say less than like, I don't know, five pounds, maybe eight pounds, why not? Um, and this, this is good enough. So let's go ahead and look at some of these results. So this isn't the extension right here, this is the... This is the web app, yeah. So this is like, okay, cool. uh, I know this is like I've a never used the web app. confusion. Yeah, so we have two different products. I, I did a really poor job branding them. <laughs> so one's called the extension. That's the, the Chrome extension that like installs up here, right? And it runs yep. on the Amazon store. Okay. This is the web app. So this is more like a traditional SaaS application. Oh, uh, okay. It runs yep. like on our servers. And then, you know, if you buy, if you get access to the monthly fee, then you have access to this. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, we started with a whole bunch of million products. Now we're at least down to a little bit over a thousand. And this is cool because like I said, you know, these, this search doesn't exist on Amazon. I can't say, Hey, show me all like the products that sell well with no reviews and stuff, but now we can using uh, the web app. So it's pretty cool. So now all of a sudden I'm exposed to all of these product ideas or opportunities that I wouldn't normally know existed. Like, um, I didn't know that people are buying, uh, 20 packs of, uh, goofy looking sunglasses. Hmm. Um, I didn't know that, you know, like some of this stuff I didn't, I wouldn't have known ever existed. Um, you know, some of it's more normal, but I don't know other stuff. Like you see some pretty obscure stuff in here, right? Or like, I didn't know like people would buy like hinges on Amazon. It's crazy. Like they buy all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Right. So, you know, I can now use this. Let's just find something weird and we'll use it as an example. Um, let's see. I like, I like to sell kind of like obscure, weird stuff just because I feel like, I don't know, oftentimes it's like less competitive. Um, a lot of people want to sell like the cool, sexy stuff and kind of like brag to their friends about. And I just sell the, the weird stuff because it's the best opportunity. 
So okay. all, all I'm doing right now is literally just going through here and looking at pictures. Um, what is this? Yeah, we'll just, we can just choose a few things. So um, like this would be pretty weird to me. Uh, recessed can lights. It doesn't look like the bulbs are in there. It's just like the light. Um, maybe that might be like a little bit more complicated than I want, but right, right. Uh, let's look at this too. An eight ton snatch. So all these items block. that are coming up are fitting your criteria that you had that you had put in previously and you could loosen up that criteria or tighten it up based on, on your needs, what you're looking for. That's exactly right. So one thing to keep in mind though, and I'm going to show this here is this one product, this particular eight ton snatch block is doing well. Um, it sells 307 a month. It only has 33 reviews. So uh, it's probably like pretty new. However, now what we want to check is, is this like an outlier? Is this like a weird product that does well? Or is this a good opportunity for us? So now what I'm going to do is, you know, I, I found this product idea that um, I never would have personally uh, thought of this particular one before probably. I'm just going to type in snatch block. I guess I was like, I would say there's probably like people like watching this webinar, like, like, Greg, you're an idiot. That's not what those things are called, man. But I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I don't know what they are, man. We're the same boat. Someone help us out. What do these okay. things do? <laughs> so yeah, I'm not real familiar. I guess, um, yeah, it's kind of like a pulley to help, uh, I don't know, winch your car or I'm not sure. So anyway. Yeah, we'll pretend like, yeah, that's what it does, man. That's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so remember like this one, it looks like, I think that was this dude. Oh uh, yeah, that looks right. Remember this one opportunity we know is pretty good, but or, or that one listing was, but is it a good opportunity as a whole? So I searched for it on all of Amazon. Now I'm using the extension again, and I want to look like what's what's the demand like over the whole niche? Because at the end of the day, that's what I really care about. I want to know like, hey, can I get in there as a brand new seller and do well with one of these or not? So remember, I have this rule of thumb that I like to use like 3,000 units throughout the total niche. Um, this dude's, uh, that's a little bit of a different product. That's like a strap. If I were to add these up, I'd say not really 3000, maybe like 1500, maybe 2000. So a, a little bit lighter on demand than what I would like to see. Um, a good price point, right? I like to see like 18 bucks or more. It looks like there's lots in that range. Um, and then I also like to see, remember, like I said, a few listings in the top 10 with like under 40 or 50 reviews. So this dude is under 40 or 50. This dude, this guy's pretty close. We can probably count him. It's like three, four. So overall, I would, my um, analysis like of this particular niche snatch blocks is that the demand's pretty good, not quite as good as what I'd like to see. And the, the competition on like a one to 10 scale, if 10's the best for us, it would be like, I don't know, like a six or a seven. So it's not too competitive. Um, the demand's pretty good, but not great. So like this would be like an okay niche, but I, I can do better if I keep looking. So um, yeah, so, that, so let's look at these uh, recessed can lights. Uh, do, 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 do. So I'm just going to search in the whole store. Sure. Recessed can light. And oftentimes people get caught up like, how do I know what to search for? It's like, ah, eh, just, just search for like whatever you think would probably be the main keyword. Um, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, yeah, just whatever you think would be like the primary keywords, fine. So this product, um, wow, great, great price point. A lot of this is selling for um, 50 bucks, 70 bucks, 90 bucks, which is pretty cool. Um, estimated sales, if I were to add all these up, yeah, I think we could get to 3,000 because just in the top, we're already at 2,000, probably add those. Yeah, about 3,000. Um, number of reviews, like I say, like I look for like under 40 or 50 in the, in the top 10. There's one guy, yeah, we could throw him in there. This guy, uh, now we're kind of starting to get out of the top 10, but a few. So for this particular product, I think it has like real good, solid demand. Um, the competition's mediocre. Like I could probably get in there. It's not like the least competitive thing I've seen, um, but not the most either. So like a five out of 10. Um, and the price point's great. I mean, there's probably lots of margin on these. Uh, you know, after Amazon fees for this top one, there's 40 bucks left over. What is six pack? I mean, I would have to look, but I would imagine you could probably get one of these six packs made for like 15, 20 bucks, which means that, you know, even at, if we got these made for like 20 bucks, um, $20 profit, which like I said, you know, um, 
$20 profit adds up pretty, you know, a lot quicker than a dollar profit. I guess the only downside to a little bit higher price point like this, like 55 bucks is, um, are getting these made for $20 is you're going to need more capital to start up. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is like how I go about my product research. I, this, or this is like how I, this is how I personally do it. I look in the product database for things that look like they would interest me or relatively simple or kind of obscure. Um, and then I search the whole Amazon store for it and see like how good the opportunity is as a whole. Um, so this is like the blueprint that I use. This is like what I've learned um, is, you know, is like the blueprint that you guys can copy and use to really minimize your risk. If you look for something that has great demand, you know, we're going just off the numbers here. So like we already know that, like I said, I think about 3,000 of these. We know like 3,000 people are going to Amazon every month searching whatever, recessed light or um, LED light or whatever and physically buying these, you know, like with their credit card. So that's like the proof that we need to know that, you know, there is demand for this particular product. So if you go based off that, you choose something that's not too competitive so that you can get ranked. And like I said, the easiest way to gauge that's the number of reviews. Um, and then after that, you just have to find something that uh, the margins kind of like um, allow you to uh, sell it. So I'm just going to go like real quick. I think people are, uh, most of the time people are usually like, okay, I understand. And like, I understand how to find opportunities now. This could be a whole separate webinar, like locating suppliers, but I'm just going to, I think most people are, I used to think like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, it seems like a good opportunity, but like, how the heck am I going to find someone to make me like recess can lights, right? But what, you'll be surprised when you see that um, just by going to Alibaba and searching this, there'll be like a thousand factories that make these recessed can Dude, lights. they have everything mm -hmm. over there, man. It's everything. <laughs> so everything like- Everything and more. Yeah, as you can see here, these are all recessed can lights. Like I promise you there's like a thousand factories on Alibaba that make these things. So I'm not inventing this product. I'm just gonna contact, you know, Shen, Shenzhen New Lamp Lighting Company and say, hey, I'm looking for like a six inch diameter recessed LED can light. And they're like, cool, you know, this is like our price. Or same thing, what do we say earlier, bowl? Like foldable um, hangers. If we search for that, like I guarantee you same thing. Um, I mean, there's just like tons and tons of factories that make hangers. You know, you just contact these people, um, all the different kinds of foldable hangers. So it's pretty easy to find a factory. Like I said, um, there's, you know, a little bit more to think about. We don't have quite enough time tonight. I, I have some more resources for that on the Jungle Scout blog that you can, that you're more than welcome to read if you'd like to, but it's the hard part is, or the part that's like everyone gets hung up on is finding the good opportunities. After that, it's, it's not that hard. I mean, it's like you can break it down in little like baby steps and I promise that everyone can do it without any experience. So it's pretty that's cool. That's what stopped. That's what stopped me because I actually, um, uh, I've I've never launched my own private label product. I did. I, I came up with a great idea. Um, I ordered samples. Everything was going great, and then all of a sudden, like fifteen sellers came in and destroyed the price. And I kind of got like, it kind of just beat me down, and I like kind of gave up on it. it. Yeah, yeah. But I want to get back into it. Like I'm. I just came back from a conference, and so many people are doing well with private label, and I want to get back into it. And um. That was the hardest thing for me is finding another product. And I guess you really have to spend time like you're showcasing, using the tool, going through, finding products and researching. Is there a demand? Are there sales? What are the reviews? Yep. Researching the margins. And then That's exactly right. over to Alibaba, like you said. And honestly, like with the tools, you can probably do it, Steve. Like if you sat down just devoted to like, you know, two, three hours tonight, I bet that by the end of that, you could find a good opportunity and roll with it. So. I really want to, man. This is, this is, I don't know about, let me know in the comment section, guys, who in the comment section is getting excited right now? Because I'll tell you right now, I'm getting a little bit of a sweat in my forehead. And you want to know what that means? I'm getting <laughs> excited, Greg. I'm getting, <laughs> All right. this is getting me pumped up. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, that's what, uh, just real quick, I'm just going to like say two other things. Like also in the Jungle Scout web app, if anyone's like interested in it, um, there's something pretty cool we have, like it's called the niche hunter. So what we've done is we've, um, kind of like imported the top 10 million search terms and we try to like automatically grade those. So, um, 
what we do is we gauge like what's the average number of units sold, how stiff the competition is, how um, like how good the listings are. So like, do they have a bunch of pictures? Do they have a bunch of like keywords, all that kind of stuff. And we tell you like how good of an opportunity, well, how good of an opportunity it is. Um, so, you know, you can just kind of like click on this stuff and it shows you all the products in that particular niche. And then we can tell you like, yeah, what the, the reviews and the demand, all that cool stuff is. And then one other thing, if you guys do decide to like check it out, uh, one cool, other cool part about the Jungle Scout web app is the little product tracker thing here. So you can add products. So let's add your uh, foldable hangers just for fun. Foldable hangers. I feel like I could never spell when we're on like webinars. I guess I get like nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good speller to start with, but uh, <laughs> so I can take this product and I'm just grabbing the, uh, the ASIN number here and I can add it to my product tracker. And what it does is it tracks the, uh, the inventory and sales on a daily basis. So for this particular product, they've been selling about seven a day. Uh, let's look at my competitor here. This guy, you know, his, the light blue bar is the inventory. So, you know, each day it's going down by about 50 or so. And this is just like a cool thing that I like to do before I like pull the trigger on a product, I'll track it for like a week or two and make sure that there's always like the off chance that someone just like ran a promotion or something else where their sales were like kind of spiked. But you know, I, I can look for this guy for the past 30 days and it's like, okay, like sales have pretty consistently been about 40 or 50 a day. Oh, I like um, that. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool thing to know. So when yeah, I was, um, when I was researching my product, I had to do that manually. I don't think at the time this was, this was like, how long has this, this uh, part of your product been out for the tracking? Uh, maybe like a year, year and a half or so. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't even aware of it. That's, that's really, really cool right there. Cause I had to do it yeah. by hand. <laughs> yeah. Going each day and try to enter like yeah. 999 or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So if you guys are enjoying this so far, do me a big favor guys and hit the like button. Um, there's a bunch of comments coming in. So, uh, I do want to ask everybody if you have any questions. Um, if Greg, are you uh, able to stay around for a couple more minutes? Answer some questions. Yeah, for sure, man. I was just gonna say like, if anyone is interested in jungle scout, you can, uh, check it out at rakeandprofit.com slash jungle scout. Um, and yeah, let's, let's get to some questions. I'm more than happy to help or answer any questions I can. Awesome. Cool. Do you want to come back on camera? Yeah, let's do it. Let me, uh, yeah, bring that. All right. Okay. Awesome. So we are back. So thanks for the, the, the presentation. Uh, a lot of people yeah, really absolutely. enjoyed it. Cool. Um, bunch of people were excited and pumped up. Michael Genova saying, I'm loving it. Heather Reynolds says, I love the show, but she actually said she was a little scared. A little scared? It's different. It's something yeah. that, you know, I guess a lot of my audience probably isn't accustomed to. And I guess deep down inside, I'd probably, I'm, I'm probably a little scared too, because it's different. What advice do you have to the people out there who, you know, we're not used to, this is different. This is unique. How, how do you go into businesses that you've never done before and get past the fear? That's a really good question. I think that's like, that's what holds most entrepreneurs back, right? Or like, or, uh, so yeah, that's, I'd say like number one is like education. I like to feel like well-informed, you know, before I'm like willing to do that. So, you know, watching webinars like this is a great step. Um, I know you have a lot of good uh, content on uh, your YouTube channel, Steve. If you guys want, you can check out the Jungle Scout YouTube channel. There's a lot of good resources there on our blog. That's good educational resources. Your blog so, is amazing, yeah. man. You, you're, the you. content you put on there is like, people will be charging for that stuff. Yeah, we try to like everything we put out, we, like the bar tries to be like the best thing in the industry, you know? So yeah, guys, if you want to check that out, because that's one way I personally get past fears, like feel like well-educated about like a particular like, you know, opportunity. So that's one thing. Um, and then there is a certain point that you do have to just step out there and like kind of like take the leap of faith, you know? It's like you feel like you're well-educated on this. Um, after that, you know, you can do some things to, like help mitigate your risks, right? Like one thing, be very data driven. I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I've talked about that a hundred times. But another thing is like you could go into this with say like a partner. So instead of, hey, having to put down a thousand bucks your own money, it's like, why don't I put down 500 bucks? You put down 500 bucks. We can bounce around ideas off each other. That's one way to like help kind of like mitigate risk a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's a couple, couple pieces of advice I have. Uh, so people are asking, can uh, Jungle Scout also be used for wholesale? Yeah, good question. So a lot of people do use it for wholesale. So um, 
the the extension you know the one thing everyone loves about the extension rates the estimated sales it shows you how many units per milling so that, that's very valuable you know if you're going into a wholesale opportunity to know like how much demand to kind of expect and the uh, the database is also a great way to find products uh, that you want to wholesale like if you have a uh, uh, an account with like you know hydro flask and water bottle here then you could search hydro flask in the database you could see what the other uh, what other water bottles were selling well. So it's like, ah, no one buys the pink one. Don't worry about wearing that. But the, the silver and the blue and the big one, those are doing great. So yeah, it helps with that as well. So um, I actually have a question that that I was thinking about. And I, yeah. I was curious on, on your opinion. Um, I know you mentioned that obviously the smaller, lighter items are easier just because you could fly it over. It's typically cheaper. You know, uh, if they're smaller, a lot of times you don't get hit with that oversized fee and different things like that. Um, but I've also heard people mention that going with the bigger, heavier, more expensive items, you have less competition and, and you know, there's more barrier to entry. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think for the beginner, just getting in, start with the small and then once you get past that hurdle, maybe get into something bigger or what do you think about that? Yeah. So, you know, um, so here are the downsides of selling like an oversized product. Okay. And then I think all you really need to know is that these exist and then take them into account when you're doing your product research. So one downside to the oversized products and if you're not familiar with the amazon has like standard size which is about the size of a shoe box if it fits in a shoe box that's like standard bigger than a shoe box is like oversized so the oversized products have higher fees which as long as you understand that and you calculate the fees before purchasing it that's not a big deal you just have to be aware of it um the when if you have a brand new amazon account i think you can only store 500 or maybe a thousand, I think only 500 oversized units. So oh, okay. keep that in mind because you, you know, if you place an order of a thousand units to get started or something, you can't store all those on Amazon. You have to store half at your house or something. Mm. So that's, <laughs> that's something to be mindful of. Um, and then really the last thing is if you're just getting started, like importing goods from China, um, you know, like I'm a big believer, like when you're first getting started, you just try to keep things like easy and simple to like help build momentum. And then you can kind of like, you know, learn kind of more of the interest intricacies or really how to kind of like level up your game with small and lightweight products. You can actually just ship them using like UPS or FedEx or DHL from China. You don't have to worry about any like that customs crap, like um, hiring a freight forwarder. It's just a little bit simpler. Um, yeah. So, you know, like the the bamboo marshmallow sticks i sell they're oversized so you know it's not that big of a deal but there there are a few more like headaches or a few more like tasks to do but as long as you're aware of them and you're willing to do that then uh yeah i mean if you find a really good oversized opportunity i wouldn't be too scared of it so for the people who are watching right now and they want to take action and they watched everything what's your advice for like the next couple steps that need to take maybe step one step two if they're here they've never done private label they watch the webinar they understand um, you know, researching and different things like give them like an outline of one, two, three things that you should cool. be doing right now. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of like just in time learning. So if you're just want to start private labeling right now, don't start researching like PPC on Amazon. It's, it's not, it's like the <laughs> easiest PPC platform ever. Once you get a product, you can worry about that. I swear it's like so simple. Um, so like, don't be worried about things like that. You can like, while you're waiting for your product to get manufactured in China, you can start learning about that crap. All you really need to know right now is you need to find an opportunity. That's like step one. By the end, by watching this webinar, I think you should have a great understanding of how to find that opportunity. After you found an opportunity, you need to find a supplier. Um, Alibaba is the place to do that. If you want some more tips on it in that million dollar case study that we're doing right now, there's a few videos. If you want to find those, those are I'll great. I'll put the links down below after the yeah, show cool. for some resources for people. All right, excellent. So yeah, that's that will help you find the supplier. Okay. After that, all you need to know are a few things about like packaging design, which is like pretty simple. Again, like we have a webinar on it um, and then getting it shipped to Amazon. Those, those would be like the steps. After you've learned that and you've done that, you have like a month or six weeks or whatever while this product gets like manufactured and shipped in and stuff. And that's when you can worry about like setting up a listing and like PPC and all that like jazz that like goes on like later down the road. All that stuff's so easy. Like Amazon makes it really easy on like even a, a brand new person there's tons of free content out there to like help you like learn how to do that like if you're trying to get if you're excited by watching this webinar you're trying to get started now it's like the step one you just need to find the opportunity and then find the supplier 
So I was looking on your site and it looks like you have, is it over 60,000 users now? Yeah, we have over 60,000 users. Wow. So a bunch Congratulations, of man. I'm, Thank you. I'm sure you interact with a ton of sellers. What yep. have you seen as like maybe the number one, number two, like the biggest things that hold people back? Let's just talk private label because this is kind of what we've been okay. kind of gearing this web webinar towards. But what is like the biggest things that have stopped people from succeeding? Maybe they come up with their idea. Um, maybe they even order the samples. Like let's say they get past that. What's the biggest thing that holds people back? Um, being scared to move forward. We already kind of talked about that, but that's something that holds a lot of people back. Um, like paralysis, uh, paralysis analysis, analysis paralysis, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> one of those, I know. One of the, uh, so people just like, uh, I guess you could kind of set the problem of Jungle Scout is it does give you like tons of data, right? It does like, which is it's like really good at, but I think some people are like, man, like I have like five opportunities, like which one should I go for? Like they're all look good. Like I'm too scared. Like I'm not sure. Um, and at the end of the day, like you have to just like pick one and go for it. Like what I tell a lot of people, you know, your first product doesn't have to be like a home run, right? Like, um, you know, even if you were to like break even on your first product, like in my opinion, it's like considered a win because the amount of like stuff you learn in the process is just like invaluable. And then like most people can like hit it out of the park with like number two, if you can just like break even with number one, right. And like chalk it up as a learning experience more often than not people do do well, you know, and like make the profit on it. But if you just like go in with expectations of like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to do this model. Like I'm just going to, my goal is to break even on like round one, like my first shipment. And then after that, you know, you can really excel, but yeah. Analysis paralysis, kind of like scared to take the leap. I mean, most people really just get hung up on product research after like you find the opportunity. It's like all the rest is not that hard. Would you say that anybody could do this or does it take like, is it something that you have to have like a technical background and like, cause I know there, you know, obviously the rules have changed with, you know, getting reviews. And then obviously, um, based on my research, you are going to have to run some, some type of promotion and PPC typically to get your sales going. I mean, is it possible for just the average person with, that's just garage selling and thrifting and they don't really have knowledge with this? Is it possible to jump in this and just kind of like learn as you go? Yeah, so it is without a doubt possible. Um, to be like, I want to be completely like straightforward about like the opportunity. Um, the one thing, if you don't have like a little bit of money to spend, like I'm going to say a thousand bucks, then I would probably, if you don't have a thousand bucks to invest in inventory, either, you know, splitting between you and a friend or your own money, I would probably say to like maybe work on some other opportunities to kind of like build up your capital because it is pretty hard, you know, like, you really need to start out with like 500 units to be able to like do like a promotion to get it started and stuff. So like if you only ordered like a hundred units, um, it's, it's kind of hard to like really get going well with like yeah. only starting out with like a limited number of opportunity. So, you know, if, if the product costs you three bucks to make or whatever, um, you know, so if you don't, I would say if you don't have a thousand bucks to spend, I'd probably focus on something else to build up my capital. But besides that, like the technical stuff is easy, man. Um, like if you figured out how to tune into this webinar, like you can easily. <laughs> we figured out how to break the, uh, the Google, the Google, uh, algorithm, the Google, <laughs> whatever. We were having issues before the show. We couldn't get them on. I almost but, um, didn't get on. So <laughs> we made it happen. Well, Craig, man, it's been fun, man. Thing. You know, I can still, I can still sell on Amazon. I can barely get on the webinar. So <laughs> It's been fun, man. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Learned uh, a lot of different things, and uh, you know the big things that I learned that I got out of this was when you're choosing a product. The number one thing is making sure that the product has a demand that there's people actually buying it. Because I hear people all the time say, like, I'm gonna get started with private label. This would be a great idea. I hear it with merch by Amazon too. That would be a great shirt, but. Right. You look and then nothing's selling. So uh, that was really big, making sure that there's not like thousands and thousands of reviews because it's going to be hard to compete. And obviously using the, the Jungle Scout uh, tool to you know check the ranking, obviously with the um, to see if there's a demand for it in, in the margins as well. And also the size too, because you get hit with a huge fee if, if it's really big and heavy. So yeah, uh, I, I learned a ton. Let me know in the comments, guys, what have you uh, learned today? If you guys are watching this, uh, after the live stream, be sure to leave a comment and say hello to uh, Greg. Be sure to check out his blog over at Jungle Scout, uh, junglescout.com. 
Yeah. And then I'd say um, for anyone else, I would also encourage everyone to download uh, the the webinar notes. So, you know, I put together all the stuff I talked about in this webinar. So that'd be at um, junglescout.com slash rake and profits. Um, so yeah, it's a free ebook with all the notes of all the stuff I talked about today. And it has like 25 product ideas in it to kind of like, you know, give you guys a little boost, a little jump start. Awesome. So uh, I will link all this up after the show down below. If you guys have any more questions, drop a comment down below and we'll uh, do our best to answer the questions. If you guys are interested in checking out Jungle Scout, uh, you can go to rakenprofit.com forward slash Jungle Scout. Uh, or you can just go to Jungle Scout and check out the, the free tools over there, the blog, um, the webinar notes. There's a lot of free content over there. And uh, Telling you guys right now, check out his blog. The content over there is insane, and the case studies are freaking amazing because nobody's doing what you're doing, man, sharing that stuff. So, yeah. um, very grateful to have you on, man. Thanks. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed. It seems like everybody um, is saying some really good things. So, thanks, awesome. everybody. Steve, uh, thanks for having me on. I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. Yep. Thanks, man. I'll see you in what? That's right. Two weeks. In the May at the Seller Summit. Two, so, three weeks. yeah. Awesome. Uh, you're speaking over there, right? Yeah. I, to, I need to come up with something to talk about, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Well, I'll see you over there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Get the links down below in the description. Hit the like button if you like the video. And, Greg, I will talk to you soon. Thanks for uh, coming on, man. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.